My name is Eric Jacobson. I teach at St. Charles School in North Hollywood and I've, this is my third year of teaching now. What inspired me to be a teacher is um, impacting lives. The other jobs I've had haven't been as fulfilling and at the end of my work day I feel like I've done something important. I feel like I've, I've touched lives. My favorite teacher I have to say is my fourth grade teacher Mrs. McDonald. She seemed like she was about 106 years old but I know she wasn't. Um, she was my favorite teacher because I remember there being a lot of order in the classroom. I was always busy doing something. I remember her spelling test. I used to love her spelling tests and I learned all my multiplication tables through her. And um, she was very, she was very firm and she was tough, but at the same time, she, I knew she cared about what she was doing in the classroom and I knew she cared about her students. So um, I learned a lot with her. I incorporate a lot of her uh, teaching techniques in my own classroom. Um, the way she set up her classroom, um, I set up my classroom that way. Sometimes I have my desk in front of the class or behind the class. Um, I have them in rows or I have them in groups. Um, she was very orderly, so there was procedures. And so the way I teach the class is through procedures. Um, walking around the classroom, making sure everybody's on task. Um, those are the things I remember her doing. Leaning over your shoulder, um, making sure you understand what to do. Um, and she would drill the procedures with us. Or, or, and I always, felt very, I always felt very secure in her classroom. My teaching philosophy is that when you teach or when you're a teacher, it isn't a job. It's your vocation. You have to really love what you're doing. You have to really care about the children. Care about what they're doing and how they feel. Do they feel secure? Do they feel safe? Um, that's the priority, I think, before you actually get into the academics. The priority is to love your students. I use all different kinds of methods in my teaching. Um, I use a lot of manipulatives, things that, that children can, can hold and touch. Um, so they have the visual. I use a whiteboard with colors um, so they get um, stimulation with colors and they can see things clearly and define things differently. Um, I use overhead projectors. I do lecture, but very short, 10, 15 minutes tops. Um, lots of reading, reading aloud. Um, I, use a, I use a little bit of everything. I use a little bit of everything to make sure they get a very well-rounded. Some children hear uh, and listen better. Other, people, other children process visually, and other people process by, by touching. So I try to incorporate all of that. And um, I also try to repeat things if they don't understand it the first time, because let's face it, you don't always get something the first time. My hobbies include music. I'm a singer. I write music. I play the piano. I'm also a runner. I run marathons. I've run four marathons in my life. Um, and the children, when I find that when the children find out that I'm running a marathon, they want to come out and like give water and they want to see me and they, they watch it on TV. So they're really supportive. But I like, those are like the things I like to do. I also spend time in the school community, um, in the church community. And um, I see a definite connection between the hobbies and my teaching. First of all, um, with the exercise, with running, it's endurance. Um, uh, you have to learn how to be on your feet. When I, I teach uh, fifth graders, so uh, they're 10 years old, and you really have to be on top of them because they have a lot of energy. You have to have a lot of energy. You're on your feet a lot. So that being in shape actually helps because if you exercise regularly, your brain works better and you can keep up with these little 10-year-olds. Um, the performing aspect, writing music, being creative, uh, also helps in lessons. I teach them songs to memorize things. I teach them um, music appreciation. Uh, I'm not a music teacher, but I, I do incorporate it in my classroom. Um, but teaching is a very creative process. It's, um, you're almost entertaining. You're almost entertaining. It's like when you first do a lesson, you have to almost perform it or practice it to give them the best lesson you can give them so they, so they can grasp it. So there's a definite connection between my hobbies and what I do for a living. The lesson I'm teaching today uh, is Bernie the Breather, we call him. Um, basically respiratory system, how we breathe, why we breathe, what, it, what happens in our body when we breathe, um, to understand the different parts of the respiratory system, the, you know, the trachea, the lungs, the air sacs, and, and then they make a project um, so they can actually hold it in their hands and see how, mechanically how it works. I decided to teach this lesson um, because it's, it shows all the different processes. I lecture a little bit, I ask questions, 
um, so they respond back. Um, I use the whiteboard and I use different color coded um, diagrams on the chalkboard so they're getting a visual. Um, and then we use manipulatives, things we can touch and hold and make. We make a breathing model so they can touch it and see it, feel it, make it real. So it really touches on all the different senses and all the different um, uh, modes of learning. The students need to know this so they can have an appreciation. I'm not going to say a complete understanding, but an appreciation of the human body, um, how our muscles and organs work, uh, the difference between a muscle and an organ, um, uh, the importance of living things, how we breathe, um, how um, the outside elements help, how, our, uh, how we breathe and how um, plants and, and can also benefit from our breathing and a basic understanding of how the human body works and, and, and the, how complex it is. To measure the effectiveness of my, of my teaching is hard to do immediately. I mean, I, of course, I could do assessments and see if they can um, process and give me back the information. But to really know if it's been effective, I, I really don't know until later. For instance, uh, just last week, um, some students I had last year ran up to me and said, Mr. J, Mr. J, thanks to you, I was able to be, do really well and get the top 10% in the, di in the um, academic decathlon, which is something we do at school. And I actually, they had to answer a question about history and they knew the answer. So I knew that I, over the summertime, that information was still in their head. Um, some other children came up and they were able to um, uh, tell me all the states in order and how I taught them that. And they were able to, to sing the song that I taught them. And, and so it's still with them. And they told me, oh, I, just, I really miss being in your classroom. So having that really, that's my measurement. It's actually time to see if they actually can hold on to the information I'm getting and, and, and if they can really understand it. Whether they're getting B, A's, B's, and C's doesn't really matter as much is, is that moment when they come up to me to tell me how much they appreciated what I gave them. When the bell rings and the door closes, and the children are there at their seats and I say good morning and they say good morning Mr. Jacobson and I say why are you here and they say we're here to learn and I say what do you have to do to do that we have to cooperate and listen okay let's get busy um, the reaction and the um, intimacy they actually get in the classroom that brings me joy I have to admit I don't always like the paperwork I don't always like the discipline but I like the interaction I like to see their face the look on their faces, if they understand something, if they appreciate something. If I'm reading them a story and they really enjoy it, I can tell immediately and that brings me joy. What I've learned from the students actually is that 10 year old children, because I only teach fifth grade, are busier than we think they are. They have a lot of demands on them and I have learned that their schedules are very demanding, especially in the city. Um, I have learned that they have a lot more on their mind than we actually think they do. They have worries, concerns, um, and sometimes, sometimes that's right in their school community. Do I fit in? Um, uh, am I smart? Or why can't I understand this? I've learned from them that um, there's a lot more going on in their heads and in their, and in their hearts than we actually give them credit for. My students make me a better teacher because they teach me how to have a sense of humor um, they point out when I'm wrong about something, they question me, and I say, good, and I say, you know, teachers can be wrong sometimes, thank you for fixing that mistake. The students make me a better teacher also um, by uh, affirming what I'm doing. Um, they like me being there, I like being there, um, and I want to keep going there because we're getting a relationship going, and that's, you got to have that to teach. That's great.